King Radhavan is the king of kings, the ruler of fate, the master of the universe. On his shoulder he carries a golden axe and rides a steed as huge as a snowy mountain. And on his arm holds an owl with flaming eyes so that he can see even at night. In my country, only madmen talk of him. But it came to pass that even sages began believing him real. King Radovan wears a paper crown and fool's bells on his mantle. His arms and legs are green as grass, for he lives both on land and in the sea. Nobody knows where he came from, or the name of his family, nor has anyone heard of his friends or enemies. He surges through the air like a thundercloud, and sails the waters like a ship on fire. No one remembers his battles or triumphs, for he leads no hosts, indifferent to conquest. He rules in peace and grandeur, basking in his power and beauty. He is a recluse, yet his face hovers in front of every man's eyes, and his voice rings in everyone's ear. But where are his gardens and palaces? Where are his fair women, swift steeds, white flocks, and noble hounds? Are his gates guarded by men or dragons? For only the insane, whose sole master, king, autocrat, and protector he is, know the pathways to his realm, and which bridges to cross to the glory of his provinces, replete with splendor and music. For our minds are bound by the seen and the heard, and only insanity can free us from the shackles of knowledge and constraints of craft. Liberty means madness, and only the mad are free. For King Radovan is the emperor of madmen who never soured on their kindness. That is why he courses through our veins only when our blood is poisoned, and lives in our minds only when they sink into darkness. And that is why just the people who have lost themselves may stumble upon him in their midnight wanderings. He is hailed only by those of us unable to recognize anyone else, and addressed by the unfortunates whose words no one understands anymore, and by men who have renounced everything, human and earthly. All people were equally blessed with good fortune and cursed with misfortune since the beginning of time, but just the mad nurse each their own personal happiness. Only they never quite become themselves, but still renew themselves in full. All men see things more or less the same, but just the insane hold their own counsel. For great wisdom should be sought only at the bottom of an abyss, since just the most afflicted among us have uttered the deepest truths. For King Radovan lives only in the eyes of those who have lost their sight. Fools speak of his treasure and search for it night and day, gnawing mindlessly through polar ice and boring through earth and stone, tireless as moles. Such have dug the planet over, rifling lonely vineyards, god-forsaken churchyards, run-down palaces overgrown with weeds, wreaking havoc and destruction everywhere. Countless mad hosts have searched from one end of my country to another, crisscrossing it forlorn and out of touch with life, and with us, ordinary mortals. They have sought King Radovan's treasure with iron tools, sticks and stones, using even tooth and nail, but managed only to dig their own graves. Whole generations of the tormented have looked for the king's treasure buried deep within us. Sometimes they got as far as the very center of the earth, toiling without pause or sleep, but the treasure kept sinking ever deeper, tantalizing them more cruelly than before. 
and so it shall be till the end of time. And they shall keep digging, never the two of them together. For the king's heir shall be only the man who digs deepest and dies digging without divulging his secret, even upon hitting the gates of the underground palace of King Radovan, the king of kings, the emperor of destinies. Ah, but to keep digging until someone else takes our stead. For it is only the others who keep us from finding what we need exactly where we seek it, and the mad know this better than the sane, but wise people know it also. Yes, madmen are not the only ones digging for King Radovan's treasure. Everyone knows that a buried treasure awaits each one of us. And so we keep digging. Whoever has the initiative, spirit, strength, or faith in life, or even the tiniest shred of a belief in the possible or the impossible. Some people dig in the field, others in the woods, searching for an idea, an ideal, an illusion, persevering by hook or crook, intrigue or even crime. All of us seek the king of our internal unrest and our endless quest. The world would disappear were it not for him and go blind without his fabulous treasure glowing in the dark and despair were it not for his obsession. For every man is always in search of something and has fixed his insane self-centered gaze upon the place where only he seeks the king's treasure. Not a man amongst us but believes that a part of King Radovan's legacy is yet to be discovered. And every single one of us knows that the treasure must be sought in secret, without saying what we are up to even to our dearest and nearest. For all men are mad, poisoned and bewitched, and the king's chambers have always stood far above the sun in daytime, and above all the stars at night, beyond even the great bear, guarding the frontier between hope and despair, Indeed, all of us are insane. The king's treasure is the venom of this world. Poets dream of it, ceaselessly trying to reach the divine and witness the unfathomable through their art. Heroes dream of it, sure only of the worth of their own sacrifice for mankind, eager to have each man, woman, and child benefit from their suffering by receiving a part of the ward. Prophets also dream of it, insanely, quirkily proclaiming ever a new bliss and a new promised land. And finally, kings dream of it, in their desire to rule through the power of love, not hate. And Moses dreamt of it when he followed the pillar of fire, and Caesar had it in front of his eyes when crossing the Rubicon, and Columbus searched for it, trusting the wind that took him to an unknown land. The king's treasure is sought by stargazers among the heavenly mists, by botanists in the petals of flowers, and by the priests trying to inspire the faithless. We all seek it, wonderstruck and insane. For our blood has been poisoned by a King Radovan residing in the leaves of grass and in every drop of clear, pristine water. That is, by a mighty ruler crossing the sky like a dark cloud or a ship on fire. We live on, serfs to the emperor of madmen, but also the king of the men of action and an ideal. The emperor of those who in the sacred fever of their minds and hearts believe in the incredible and accomplish the impossible. For King Radovan is the king of kings, more powerful than Agamemnon, richer than Midas, profounder than Ezekiel, wiser than Solomon. For the eye of the world is fixed upon him. Thank you.